Welcome back to Requirements Engineering. I just want to do a quick clarification for you today about the term non-functional requirements. You will come across that everywhere in industry and I want to debunk it a little, decompose it a little. I want to enable you to break it down so you can work with those. Because essentially the term non-functional requirements is kind of chickening out of really telling us what it is. It says, oh, I'm not that, but it doesn't tell us what it is. So it's pretty easy to take the functional requirements and separate them out because they all talk about how a system behaves under certain circumstances. But when it comes to everything else, then we take a minute and think about it or we just stuff them all into the non-functional requirements. Today we'll take the minute to think about it. So what really is going on are three subtypes here. And you may find a couple of different frameworks out there for it. Some have three subtypes, some have four subtypes, but you know, as with any framework, it is only a means to structuring information. That means you're gonna use the one that you find most useful for the project context you're in. So I'm going to show you a simple framework with three subtypes. First subtype is quality requirements. Quality requirements refer to quality attributes or characteristics and break them down for a specific project. We talk about maintainability, availability, reliability, performance, usability, all those beautiful quality characteristics. So the detail quality characteristic for a specific system. And if you want to know what those quality characteristics are, a full list of those is available in the ISO 25010. That's the standard for software quality models. Then we have a second subgroup. If you think about how to perform requirements engineering on a large scale, if we have a large company with many hundreds of developers involved, we probably have some processes of how we do requirements engineering. And if a client has certain demands on that, then we categorize those as process requirements. So process requirements, they give us details about how we want to proceed in a certain step in our requirements engineering. So they describe how the software development process is to be carried out. And then last but not least, when we have a context for our system, we have a business context and we have an operational context. Remember, the business context is what setting in business terms we find ourselves in with the system. So we have a mobile app or we are developing a big embedded system or we are uh, developing in-house tools for another business unit, or we are developing products that we're going to ship to somewhere. Those are the different settings, and they all come with a bunch of constraints that we just know from the start. Like, which systems does our system have to talk to? What does their interface look like on that other system that we'll be talking to? And that information needs to go somewhere, and that's what's called constraints. So they come either from the business context or from the operational context. With those three subcategories, you have a surefire way to deal with everything that is not a functional requirement. 
So now you can give a good answer and a pretty straightforward of handling every time that term comes up in a software development setting in any future company that you may work at. Thank you.